One of the first things recruiters look at when hiring you as a developer is your GitHub profile. It shows them any technical skills you've learned as well as all of the open source projects you've contributed to. Today I'll be showing you how to stand out from the competition by improving this GitHub profile so it's not just a bunch of plain text and emojis. Stick around because there's a lot of cool things that you can do with simple HTML and Markdown. So firstly, let's take a look at my current GitHub page, show you what we're gonna be getting into. So right up here, we have this lovely little animation that I, I really like. It's just this typing out animation that shows you some text. So in this case, I just say, hi, I'm Torin, and then I love learning Blender, I love spreading uh, knowledge, and a few other text prompts as well. Below that, we also have my social media accounts and the follower count for those accounts. And down here, we also have the languages and tools that I use. So I use Python, Go, JavaScript, of course, HTML and CSS. You can argue if those last two are languages or not, but I won't comment on that, as well as some of the main tools I use. So like 3JS, FastAPI, Django, GitHub, and Blender. Right below that, we also have the contact me section. So these are just links that take you to my social media accounts that you can get in touch with me if you need contract work or, or work or something like that. Below that here, we have this statistics section, which I just love. It shows you a very detailed and in-depth view of your GitHub activity. So how many stars you have, the total commits, as well as the total PRs, total issues and contributions. Right over here, we also have the current streak. So it shows you how many days you've been coding for and committing to GitHub. So I've been going for three days now. I hope to keep it up. But the longest I've gone for is 19 days, which was when I was developing the Blend My NFTs Blender add-on. Took a while to uh, to get that up and running. Um, down here, we also have the contribution graph for the last 30 days. So it just shows you like when you've been contributing and by how much over here on the y-axis and then down here we also have the most used languages so as you can see i primarily use python quite a bit a lot of html and javascript as well and a very very little css i'm not i'm not too much <laughs> i'm not a big fan of css uh, and down here this counter actually shows you how many people have visited this page as of now so if we refresh this page here this should go up to 410 right there. So it'll show you how many people have actually visited your page. And it's a nice little thing to tell people like how many, how many times they've viewed your page. Down here again, I have the current projects I'm working on. So I'm currently working on the Cozy Auto Texture project as well as Blend My NFTs and thiscozystudio.com. And these just simple descriptions of what I'm doing, how, how they work and what they're supposed to be. And then I have a nice little about me section down here that's sort of more personal and like more background related. So it, it tells people what kind of experience I have when I've started developing and learning languages. And then below that, this is just the normal GitHub stuff. So it shows you your main repositories here, as well as your commit history in a more um, detailed manner. I kind of like how they have it set up here. And then it goes down to show your contribution activity. But right now we're gonna be focusing on this readme file here. And let's get started and show you how it works. So to follow along with this tutorial, you can find this link here down in the description. And what we're gonna do is just click on this readme.md file. This will show you all the source code for my profile. And we're gonna click this little edit button right here. Now, a lot of what we're gonna be doing is just copy paste. So let's go ahead and copy this first paragraph line here. You can tell it's a paragraph because there's the P and then the little carrots on either side. So let's copy that and paste this into our own profile right here. So you can find this at your username, so github.com slash your username, your username, edit main readme.md. And we're just gonna paste that right there. And the next thing we're gonna be doing is removing all of the lines that show up. So I'm just gonna take that and cut that out there. So there should be this little variable here that says lines equals whatever. And what we're gonna be saying is hello world. And notice that we replace the spaces in our sentence with plus signs. So if we do that, we can click this little preview tab right here and it'll show you what your profile will actually look like. And as you can see, it works. And we have a little hello world exclamation point there. Now it's just repeating the same text because we only have one prompt in the lines variable. So if we go back here, we can add a semicolon to add a second line and then say things like I plus love GitHub. Add another space there, exclamation point and then preview that and it will say hello world and then I love GitHub. And you can add as many as you want. So yeah, anyway, that's a pretty cool thing we can do. So let's move on. The next thing we're gonna be taking a look at is the social media badges here and the following counts. To do that, let's just copy and paste this next paragraph here. 
go to back to our readme file and just paste that in there. So obviously you probably don't want my social media links on your GitHub profile. So these first two links here are kind of special. You need to actually say what your username is on Twitter or on GitHub. So right here I have Leonard Torn, that's my Twitter handle. And then down here we have my GitHub followers, which is uh, Torn Works. So just copy and paste your username or Twitter handle there. And then to get the follower counts for your YouTube channel, you're gonna to need to get the channel ID, paste it right in here, right before the question mark and the style, and just after the subscribers link. And you can get this little code by going to your YouTube channel studio website, by going to studio.youtube.com forward slash your channel. Um, and then the code we're gonna be getting is this little code up here. So let's copy that. And you can see it's identical to the code we have here. So just paste that in, it's gonna be the same for me. Um, and then we can preview this and it will show up down here. So you can see the subscriber counts and if we open this link in a new tab, it will take us to that YouTube channel, as you can see right here. The next thing that we're gonna be adding are these little badges here that display what kind of tools that you've learned. So we can go to edit file again and we're gonna copy and paste the next paragraph tag right here. And let's go back to our profile here. Uh, we're gonna paste this in and see what we're gonna deal with. So we have five little badges right here and let's try to customize this. So I'll walk you through what we're doing. So if you wanna add another badge, you can copy and paste the image tag right there. And this will add an additional badge to that section. So you can see that we now have two CSS badges right there. So we can go down here and change the color of the icons with this little logo color variable right here. Let's say we wanna change it to red. We can go back there and we see that the CSS logo is now red. We can also change the type of badge that we have right there. So if we want it to be a different badge, like Python, for example, we can go back and see that it's changed to a red Python badge. And over here is where we can change the actual text that will display on the badge. So instead of CSS, let's say we want it to say Python in capital letters right there, and it will display Python. So. I'm going to delete this one actually. There are a ton of different badge types that you can get. Most of the ones that you can use can be found on this simple icons website here. There are badges and icons for literally every company and every software out there. So you got Adblock, Adblock Plus, all these different logos, even Adidas and some real world companies like Air Canada, Air China. Um, it just, the list goes on. It's just, it's incredible how, how many there are on here. Um, and they're all SVGs, so you can scale them. So shields.io is a website website that just creates these badges for you. So if we actually go to this link here, you can see the exact badge that we're going to be adding. So it just appears right in that corner there, but it's just a little CSS HTML badge right there. And having this link here and just adding it as an image in HTML makes it really easy to use. So we can do things like change the icons for this particular badge. So let's say if we don't want Python, we want something easy like CSS. So we'll add CSS3. And then if we go over here, we can see that the badge type changes and we don't obviously don't want CSS to have a yellow badge. So we can change the logo color to white. So we can do that by using simple color names or hexadecimal characters. In this case, let's just do something simple like white and change it to that. And then you can see it changes the color. We can also change the badge color by highlighting this number right here and changing it to white as well. So let's say we want white on white, or let's make it black because more contrast, I guess. Black, there we go. And it changes the badges right there. So you can customize this stuff quite a bit. Um, I've messed around with a lot of the colors and the badges for the logos and stuff like that. And I, I think I like it so far. So let's continue. Uh, from here, the next thing that we're gonna be doing is creating this, this little contact me section. And this is really simple, so if you followed along so far, it's just gonna be the same thing. We're gonna be adding this little section right here, so let's just copy that, and let me explain what's going on here. So it looks much bigger, but we're just aligning these links to the center, uh, as well as the little contact me paragraph right here. Obviously, you want to be contacted, you don't want my links, so the links that we're gonna be adding are going to be here, and you can get these links on your profile, and just replace them with uh, whatever your social media links are. Right below the contact me section is the statistics section. So this is my favorite part. Uh, it's the more, most visually appealing and interesting aspect of this profile. So let's go ahead and take a look. Right here, right at the beginning is the statistics animation. So if we copy this, we can go ahead and paste this into the profile that we're building right here. 
And basically what it is, is a link to this little GIF right here. So if we copy that link, we can see that this GIF is actually a media and we can see on giphy.com the full link here. And it's a little, little graph that goes up and has some fireworks there. So what we're doing is just creating a header with this little hash icon with markdown. And then we're adding an image tag here with HTML. And then that statistics text is actually a header. So if we go back here and visualize it, we can see that it looks pretty cool. And it's also got this neat little separator down here as well. So let's go ahead and add this uh, Torrents GitHub stats section right here. And if we go back, that section that we're gonna be copying is located right here. So if we copy this, go to my the profile that I'm constructing, and paste it right down there. We can see my profile statistics. So we have these two badges right here. You obviously wanna see your own. So let's go ahead and customize that for you. What you're gonna to wanna to do is change the username and user variables right here to whatever your username is on your GitHub profile. So if we go to your GitHub profile, you'll see your name right here. And then just below that is the actual username that you're gonna be wanting to use. So you can also find it up here in the URL section. So if we go here and just you know paste in your username, uh, it will show you the statistics for your specific GitHub profile. Now, some people like the privacy. So if you do not want to include all commits, you, you can set include all commits to false by going just like that and doing the same thing down here. So I like to include it because it shows all the work I've done, not just the uh, public work that I've done. Um, and we can just set this to true. But obviously if you want more privacy, you can just set this to false. There's nothing wrong with that. And if we go back here, we can see the statistics that show up. Now, if we check out the main statistics part, we see this nice little graph. We want we want that graph, right? So let's go to edit file and we will check this out. So the main part of this graph is gonna be in this section right here. So let's copy the rest of the statistics section and I'll walk you guys through how to do it. And let's paste this in. And so this is the title right here. So we can say, hello world. And you're gonna to wanna to make the spaces this time uh, percent 20. And that's how we're gonna designate spaces within this link. So if we go back to the preview, you can see that the graph changes there to hello world. It will display the statistics. So obviously, again, you want to make sure that your username has been changed to your actual username. You're not looking at my statistics. And you can do the same thing with this next uh, code part right here that shows the programming languages that you've worked on uh, just down here. The next thing we're gonna be looking at is the counter. And again, you can change the username right here. So it just displays how many people have visited your page. And the next thing we're gonna be doing is adding a project section. So let's go ahead and just copy this again. And walk through what's going on. So we have the header right here and we create a header by simply adding two hashes as well as adding the little image of the dove flying right there, the little origami dove. And again, this, this is just an animation similar to the statistics graph right there. And then we're gonna be adding each element in that list. So these are just basic HTML tags. So it first adds a list and then an item in that list. And then we're gonna be adding a link as well as some other markdown stuff right here. And it will add these nice little uh, dots to make the list look a little more appealing. So if we click these links, it will actually lead to the other GitHub repositories that I've made. Um, as you can see here, the Cozy Auto Texture, uh, Blend My NFTs, and the this CozyStudio.com website that you can see right there. And then just a random other project idea down here. Uh, the next thing that we're gonna wanna add is the About Me section. So very similar to the current projects, it's actually quite easy um, as it's just text. So we can go down here and just copy all of this. Again, we're just adding another header up here. And we just add a few more lines and paste it in. And all of this text will just appear uh, on the page as you'd expect. So it's really simple and really easy to use. It's almost like using a Google Doc, um, but you can do some much cooler things like adding embedded links and some cool animations, statistics, and profile view counters here. So to add an embedded link, you're gonna to wanna to add what's called an anchor tag in HTML. So this is just simply some carrots with the letter A and then this href link. So we can copy and paste whatever link we want the embedded link to go to um, and just paste it right in here in between these two quotation marks. And then the text that we're gonna to wanna to add is going to be right between these two anchor tabs. So we can say again, hello world. 
exclamation point, and then move over to the preview, and you can see that the uh, little link there changes to hello world. So I hope that gives you a basic overview of how the GitHub profile is structured. Um, there's a lot of markdown, a lot of HTML tags as well, really simple stuff to learn, um, but it is kind of confusing like with these lists and stuff like that, but again, you can use all of these as examples and just sort of copy and paste these in to add more elements to your list like we duplicated right there or you can edit them to add more um, detail don't worry too much about the structure oh am i breaking this or not uh, it's really simple you can't mess it up just make sure that all the text is inside these carrots here or inside these exclamation points within here if you're adding a link and another thing to mention just to remind you guys is always uh, change your username so this example is using my username because it's my profile, um, but just make sure you change those if you want your statistics to show the actual statistics of your profile. So another tip I would recommend on your GitHub profile is in this repository section. So if you have a lot of repositories that are just simple forks of other GitHub projects and you actually haven't contributed to those forks, I'd recommend setting them to private or removing them entirely because it shows recruiters that sometimes that you start a project and might not finish it. Of course, we all do this. So it's just a nice way to clean up your profile so that you can see the main projects that you've been working on um, and give them a good feel for your experience. Another tip as well is to add a little neat description here and just some of the projects that you've done. You can also go after some of these achievements here. So if you click achievements, uh, you can see quick draw, um, and a few other starstruck and pull shark. There's a list of achievement badges at this GitHub repository here. So it goes through badges that you can currently get. Um, I'm not gonna go after any of these, but I'll leave this link in the description. And if you're looking for more inspiration on how to customize your GitHub profile, this is an excellent GitHub repository that I highly recommend. It's a big list of all of these GitHub profiles that have really cool concepts in them. You can even create things like games in them, just something really cool. So I highly recommend checking it out. Like I said before, these two links will be in the description. But anyway, this is just a quick video. I thought you guys might find it interesting. Let me know what you think down below in the comments and have a good day.